this meeting to order, September 16th, Miami Township Board of Trustees. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of September 5th. I so move. A second. Uh, any discussion? I didn't see any emailed corrections. Either. It was a week ago, so I forgot. Uh, as submitted, I hear uh, moved and seconded to adopt the minutes. Uh, Trustee Nutcher? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. And Hollister? Also, yes. I'd uh, entertain a motion to approve payment of bills totaling $30,632.75 from the general fund $5,775.42, cemetery fund $3,188.79, from the fire fund $18,269.30, and from the road fund, $3,399.24. Do I hear a motion? Yes, I move that we pay the bills. A second. Moved by Moyer and seconded by Mutcher. Any discussion? Mutcher? Uh, Yes. Moyer? Yes. Hollister? Yes. Uh, is there any correspondence that triggers comment or agenda item? I don't recall seeing any. There was then well, I was, was going to say something about Glenn Helen correspondence a month ago, <laughs> but uh, we have Nick Buddhist from Glenn Helen who is going to uh, make some reports and requests. Are there any other additions to our printed agenda? I have none. Uh, I will bring up discussion of the proposed uh, contract with consultants who's finished his previous work. And we have we have under um, fiscal officer we have a, an amendment of the permanent appropriations. Yeah, that's well, I mean, right. It's on there. Uh, well, Nick Budis. Executive Director of Glen Helm. Um, uh, pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, so uh, it has been slightly over uh, two years uh, since um, uh, the Glen Helm Association by New Township entered into a, uh, a agreement for uh, us to uh, uh, manage uh, Glen Helm Mill, both the bed and breakfast and the facility, uh, and it seemed like an opportune time to uh, to come before you to check in, uh, to chat about how that's going from our perspective and, and uh, from yours. Uh, I uh, put together a memo listing some of the things that I was hoping that we might be able uh, to discuss with relation to um, uh, some needs of the property that, that we've observed. Um, uh, you know, uh, stepping aside, back from that, um, we feel good about how things are going uh, at, at the mill. We, um, uh, we're, we're comfortable with the, the condition of it in terms of, of the work that we've been doing to maintain it. We're, we're comfortable with um, the, uh, the public programs, recognizing that there can always be more. We're comfortable with the um, uh, bed and breakfast bookings, recognizing that there, there could always be more. Uh, but uh, I see this as an opportunity to, to check in with, with one another. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'd be happy to uh, to read through uh, this memo in uh, in brief or in detail, whatever feels um, most sensible for your process. I defer to Chris's. I guess I got deferred to. <laughs> um, we could go over it, uh, Nick. It doesn't have to be verbatim, but just in the general. Uh, in your general outline? Sure, um, sure. Uh, so uh, let's see, uh, one of the things that's uh, a core component of this uh, of our agreement uh, is that at least once a quarter we, we host some, some program at the mill that's open to the public to ensure that there's regular open hours. And I see that everything that's listed here has already passed. We, um, so uh, our, uh, our fall calendar is now out, we've got uh, some bird walks that are taking place at the mill, but one of the events that we're, um, we're pleased to be able to host is a, a collaborative event with the Yellow Springs Historical Society. That'll take place October 27th, uh, and that uh, features the art of Robert Whitmore, uh, who of course uh, lived in the property right next to the mill on, on Bryant Park Road. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to that. I invite you to participate, 2 to 4 p.m. Um, Sunday, the 27th of, of October. Great. Um, uh, so one of the uh, out outstanding items uh, that I referenced in my memo is um, uh, property taxes. Uh, the mill has a, a split designation and the, um, um, the um, uh, agreement that led to uh, the mill being owned by Miami Township way back in 2004 uh, places the obligation of property taxes on the township. Um, we'd like to be reimbursed. Sure. Uh, yeah. um, and, I, and I have changed my mind in, in over time about that. Um, and. I could explain that in a second or, or not. Um, just as for our purposes, for the introduction and for the general public, we just make the quick statement that um, under the arrangement between Glenn and uh, us, um, at the when this happened, Jim Hammond, Jim Hammond was solely responsible for the operation of the bed and breakfast. In addition, he undertook at his own volition, any and all repairs, renovations, or any other costs related to both the operation of the B&B and the repair and maintenance of the building itself. Miami Township paid zero dollars in the 16 years he, he operated the B&B. &B. That's where we started at, at, from an obligation and a, and a financial obligation point. The property tax issue, um, I went round and round and round with the Green County property uh, uh, tax assessor and the, and the owner himself about this issue a long time ago. And um, what they decided was that because a percentage of the mill was being used as a commercial establishment, the bed and breakfast, then therefore there would be a percentage of the property tax that was assessed um, that we didn't argue with too, too much um, to pay for that part of the use of it. And that's what we ended up doing for quite a few years. Um, God love Antioch would only bill us for for that part like every five or six years. They would forget about it, and then they send me a stack of invoices from the county. And, okay, so write them a check. Uh, so anyway, that's that's past history. It got stuck in my mind, Nick, and it, this was my fault. It got stuck in my mind that because now we weren't using it as a commercial, part of it as commercial, and, and, and you were, um, then that part would be yours. Well, then the little light came on after I read your thing a couple of times and said to myself, well, we own the building. This is what's being taxed, not, not the land that's on top of it, although there might have been part of that, which you should be paying. No, you're not, because it's taxes. So I agree with, with your supposition that, yes, uh, we do owe that amount of tax. We should, we should be paying it. Uh, we should be continuing to pay it because it is a building responsibility, not an operational responsibility. 
Do either of you agree or have a different opinion on that? I don't have the history of this. Uh, uh, from the larger effect. My first thought is to agree, but it also sort of moves, it jumps down to uh, building and property work. It is we, are we responsible for maintenance of the building? Yes. Okay. Let's not get too far ahead okay. of ourselves. With that. I, I wanted to make sure, I'll make sure we're, there's a connection. That is because it. it's our building, mm -hmm. we're maintaining it, yeah, we should be paying the tax. It's a right, and just because it's our building, whether we maintain it or not, that's the, the tax people don't care. But, right, but um, now, at in the terms of the context of the relationship, right. Now, at, the, stuff is at, our, at the time that the Glenn decides they don't want to be in the bed and breakfast business anymore, mm -hmm. hopefully they will say, as of September 1st, we're out of it. Then we can make application to the county auditor and say this building is no, more, no longer being used as a commercial operation. And consequently, we don't feel we're we're obligated to pay any tax on it because of the whole. Tax. So, are we on the same page, kind of dish? I I would agree with uh, paying the taxes and let's let's make motions later. After the we could do it a, a consent, a consent. Mm -hmm. um, so that's for how many years? Now we will reimburse them. Uh, two. Uh, uh, yes, we. Uh, the beginning of time for us is um, uh, June of 2022 when, when we uh, ink the agreement with, um, with the township. So the, the total number that's reflected there is two two years. Would, would you be possible to get a, a copy, a, just a photocopy of oh, the yeah. uh, of the uh, invoices from the county? Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Well, then we can roll that into the. The next meeting for the actual vote. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, next item on my list, which I hope is a, um, a friendly housekeeping item. So we have a, uh, a monthly payment to the township for um, uh, for the use of the space. It would help our purposes if, if there's any way to automate that through uh, you know. Uh, um, an automated transfer, mm -hmm. uh, and we'd be grateful if, if that was possible. I believe we have no problem with that. We uh, we have we have electronic fund transfers out and in, so and uh, we probably use the same bank. Uh, we use US Bank. Yeah. So we'll ask our uh, fresh financial officer to uh, put that system in place. She's one thing she's excellent at is making. Uh, finance, or electronic transfers, setting, setting them up. So that will take care of that one. Um, um, the, um, uh, you know, uh, Don, you asked a question about maintenance. The, the way that the agreement is um, structured is that the Glen Hall Association, you know, is responsible for kind of taking care of anything that's sort of a, uh, you know, a consumable inside the building. Uh, and uh, if there are uh, durable items, there's a um, um, uh, deductible <laughs> that, that applies to that, where, where we're responsible for the first $500 of whatever that thing is. Uh, and then on the outside of the building, uh, the township is is, is responsible. At least that's sort of the, the cliff notes of the way that the agreement is, is structured. So I uh, identified a number of things that are on the outside of the building that would be um, uh, would be great uh, for um, if, if the township was able to do that, or or for us to make arrangements uh, uh, to have it done, even if we are the ones managing that process, would not be helpful. Uh, but it, but it includes routine things that happen, you know, on a on a building, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, rotting wood in places, un, un, unpainted unpainted wood in places. I also wanted a flag. Um, uh, there are two um, 
uh, lights. Well, let's um, not get to that one yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just because there's two different. Gotcha. All right. Fair enough. Responsibility. So, so those those are the. Um, uh, so that those this are the is work items. that you want done. Yes. Yes. And is it work that I've that you talked to Dan? I've, I've discussed this with our with our property administrator, <laughs> newly elected. Or new, Let's right. see, Rose, Rose manager, mm -hmm. cemetery sexton, and property administrator. I guess. Administrator. Um, how did you know? <laughs> All that rolled up. And he has uh, indicated that um, he and his people, he has people, uh, can undertake those uh, without that much of a problem. The, the one qualification for that is it has to be done, you know, when it fits into the general schedule of, I mean, for example, if, you know, there's a big snowstorm, you can't really put the plows away and, and paint the deck or something at the time, but he said that he felt comfortable that he could get those items in the next, before the first of the year, anyway, or it's right. impossible to get it right. done. Now, would there be a situation, let's say a broken window, uh, that, I mean, it just needs to be done, uh, let, let, let's have a protocol so Nick can call somebody to, whether it's call Dan and then Dan confirm with a, you know, one of the trustees or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so stuff could be done like that if necessary. So my understanding of our agreement is um, if there's something that we recommend, we run it up the flagpole with the, with the township. If there's something that's an emergency, we fix it and let you know. Mm -hmm. Um, if if you would want for a different process than that, well, I, I didn't. I haven't read the agreement since yeah. the first time we voted on it, so I didn't remember that. A good example is, and, and Nick is bringing this to us, that um, they had an issue with the floorboards. Uh, I think it was the first floor. Yeah. Uh, that they were warping to the extent where apparently people were catching their feet on it. Is that right? Something like that. And they went ahead and made the executive decision to have that repaired. Did not consult us to have it repaired, and then are asking us because uh, it exceeds the five hundred dollar deductible, and so they're asking us. It was a thousand. Just happened to work out that way. Asking us to share that cost um, as part of the agreement, and I certainly have no problem whatsoever with that happening that way. And and certainly willing on my part to uh, forward them the additional the $500 uh, hour portion. The only thing I ask, again, it's, it's not like a little old lady, it would be nice to have a copy of that invoice that we can have for you know our auditors when that time comes. Absolutely. You agree? Yep. And, and it doesn't... I mean, I, I think we should formally vote on those since it didn't go through our, our other voting process. Okay. Not quite. We're not quite there yet. <laughs> yeah. um, so the last item, which it sounds like you wanted to reserve some time to discuss, is... Um, well, there. yes and no. I, I do not mean to interrupt you. Yeah. But I do want to let, if you don't know, and for the general audience and perhaps our other trustees, that, that, that issue was brought up six or eight months ago. Uh, it was presented to us, me. Uh, I reviewed it. I made the decision. I let the representative from the Glen know. And I don't know why I, I need to spend your valuable time here and, and my valuable time, which is not as valuable as your valuable time, because it's a done deal. And I, I, don't, I don't see anything that that requires reopening this question. Nothing has changed since the repairs were made and uh, um, the decisions were made. I'm sorry to be um, lost. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, also, you didn't clarify, even though we've got the paper in front of us, 
someone watching the video doesn't know what's this light situation. Okay, well, as I said, the light situation has been taken care of. Okay, it's, it's done. So the repairs were made and the decision was made on what to do with the other one and, and that's old news. I don't, I don't really see why we need to revisit it because I don't see any Thing changing. I, 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 I'm okay. I realize where where um, uh, I'm I'm behind the curve here. Um, uh, so it sounds like there was a, a formal decision made with regards to this position of the lights. So I I'm, I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, formal in as much as. Uh, by um, by my being the, the person who's generally in the past been in charge of the mill and what happens with it and what we do with it and how much money we spend on it and all that good stuff, you know, that decision, that problem came to me, I solved the problem, I made the decision. Okay. And I um, so continue. Uh, uh, what was that decision? <laughs> well. It, it, it got a little bit sticky in as much as the, the question was there are two overhead lights, uh, outside lights uh, around the mill, one in the, in the parking lot up towards the dam and then one right close to the parking lot where the mill is. I was there when Jim Hammond put those lights in and they were put in for the convenience of his, of his customers for the mill. Um, not for security reasons, but so they could have a path of light to get from here to there. Now, keep in mind, the one in the parking lot, the parking lot itself, is it was never under the auspices of the Grinnell Mill. That was outside of the, the parcel that was divvied out with Antioch, where we had two, three point four, four point four acres of land, you know, that was designated for the mill is what we were renting for 195 years. Anyway, the parking lot's outside of that. Obviously, the other light's not, not in it. The parking lot light apparently burned out at, one, at some point, uh, and the other light on the, near the parking lot is, as far as I know, still operating the way it was intended to. The, the request was that both lights be changed uh, repair the light at the Glen parking lot and replace the light, um, the, the operating light, with one that has a uh, has a timer in it and has a has a down oh, or shines down shines down, uh, which frankly kind of defeats the purpose of giving people a pathway to get to the mill because now you just have one little you know you got one light shining down. My my thought was that light's been there for 16 years, exactly the same way that it is today. It's, it's run, it runs 24 hours a day, I believe. And it's as bright as it was, and it hasn't been changed, and, and we've never had a complaint about that light in the 16 years. So I say to myself, self, this is not a security light, this is a convenience light for the bed and breakfast. If they don't like the light, turn it off. That's fine with me, because it doesn't really have anything to do with the mill itself. And that's what I told your representative. Okay, I, that, that information did not come back to me. I'm sorry for communication like that. Okay. Um, so, uh, I just didn't yeah. think it was a proper use of taxpayer money. And, and that's how I tend to think about things, yeah. you know, being a, a fiduciary of, to, of some sort of, of taxpayer's money. Uh, you know, if it was some other problem, if it was broken, you know, like, like the other light, you know, I, you know, I felt we were kind of generous in replacing that light, even though we don't own it. Although the person who put it in, I mean, he went, he went on your property and put his light on it, and I don't know, I don't remember at the time what the agreement was with the Glen for putting that light in, whether, whether he just put it in, maybe, or ran by somebody. But uh, that's, a, that's a detail I don't have yeah. knowledge of right here. Um, so um, 
One of the things that is curious about the mechanics of this light, I mean, I, I, I tend to think that that light does offer value to the township in terms of in terms of illuminating township a township asset at night in a period where if the mill is not occupied, uh, that site uh, will have vulnerability. Um, we have lots of lights on the outside. I yeah. mean, we have uh, enough lights that if we needed to transfer them from a residential or a, you know, a bed and breakfast type thing, we could put, we could use the outlets that we have and put substantial lights on those. Copy that. We, yeah. He didn't put that pole in there for security. He put it in there for convenience of the, of the bed and breakfast. So we have a hour lease because it's structured around us maintaining the inside of the building and the township maintaining the outside of the building. We have this 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 overlap <laughs> on the subject of the light. Uh, and the if the light works though. The light works, okay. but it works uh, it's a, uh, a high wattage light, so it consumes a lot of electricity. I understand that it works and it doesn't work the way you like it to work. Right. And it, if that's the case, go ahead and turn it off or change it. Do whatever you want with it. Okay. But that's the way it came. Let me ask a different question. If we chose to um, change out the light or to turn off the light, um, who, would, who would you want us to work with on that? Any qualified electrician that you that you use in the rest of the clan, I assume. Does the township want to be involved in us managing that in any way? No. Okay. Would we pay for it? Hmm. That's, I mean, that was the whole crux of it. That I, I just didn't think since the light works and is operated, and that's it's the way it was when the Glenn took over the operation, that's the way it was, I mean, the light worked in the same, same way. Um, it hadn't been moved, it hadn't been increased in light, the, the shade hadn't changed. And if there was somebody in the mill that was objected to the light, there are shutters in every single window, and they work perfectly, or at least they worked perfectly before, you just go, you know, and to buy light. Uh, I'm, I'm prepared to put this topic to bed. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, I just didn't want to waste our time, and now we've just been probably, you know, 10, 15 minutes on Well, on I, show I, I, did, I did want, need uh, clarity on a way forward. Uh -huh. um, okay. uh, because right now, there's a, uh, a, a high wattage light that is on 24 hours a day. The, the Glen Hill Association is responsible for the electricity bill for um, and um, so that's not uh, a sensible thing for us to continue with this present. Well, it, get, it gets fed by the by the box right below it. You know, I would think you could put a you could put a, a timer on it. Uh, you know, a twelve hour timer or whatever, and cut your cost in half. And the timer costs you maybe fifty bucks to put in. I, I don't know, but yeah. okay. So what I hear from this is when we get the get copies of the property tax bill and copies of uh, the floor repair, we'll reimburse you. Okay. I so move. I, I don't. I don't think we would. I'd rather wait till we have them. And then move. Oh, okay. Just as we would have among you know other bills to come in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marilyn, do you want to say anything? No, I don't. I Um. She's got so many papers in front of her. She doesn't have time to talk. She has to go through. Uh, well, I, I think the whole relationship, with, the whole story of the Grinnell Mill is fascinating. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Somebody paid to have it rehab. Township stepped in and, well, township stepped in. Somebody paid to have it rehab. It got turned over to the Glen and it's still there. It's still there. It's, uh, it's, a, it's in great shape. It's a great asset for our region. 
Um, I only want to am extremely pleased that, that you all have it and are using it. I mean, that, that was the intention, I think, all along that it was that it was to be used some way, shape, or form for the for the benefit of the his, of its historical value and for the public. And I think at the moment, you know, it's it's still serving that purpose, and we appreciate it. Well, uh, you know, likewise, um, the. Um, uh, I, I hear tales of the condition uh, of the mill before the township and Jim Hammond stepped forward to, to do the repairs and not only was the place saved to be a, uh, you know, a, a resource for the region, but it was made into an extraordinary space. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there still a video about internal operation on YouTube. Yeah, I, I, I probably got that somewhere. Yeah. Well, I, I think it, well, I saw it on YouTube and featured you giving a tour of the mm -hmm. interior. My, my only other question on the list, and, and maybe the back and forth, Chris, that you and I have kind of alludes to that, is I, I would love for us to have a, uh, a, a clear path forward in terms of how uh, um, we communicate with one another, uh, share updates, uh, follow up on those, uh, so that everybody's on the same page, and we're able to keep you well informed, and you're able to keep us well informed, and everybody's happy. I think this is a, a, a perfect example of how that can be done. I mean, the Glenn's here, we're here, you had questions, we had maybe answers, um, we had a conversation. I don't think it has to be that much more formalized. Um, if you don't have any more information or updates or things that you need, want to talk about, then wait until you do. I, I, you, know, you don't necessarily have to show up. You don't think that an annual check-in would be, an annual report would be appropriate? Um, I would certainly be in favor of a um, um, I, I should consult our agreement and make sure that we're not obligated to any sort of check-in timeline, but um, 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 uh, annual seems reasonable to me, recognizing that there may well be some years where we don't have a heck of a lot to, uh, to uh, share back and forth, and that's okay. But you can list the public events that happen. Yep. Um, but you know, here we have a bill going about that back two years. Um, right. Yeah, well, and, and I didn't bring it today, but we, we did prepare a memo last year after, after mm -hmm. we've been um, uh, uh, managing it for a year. I, I do have a concern about the grammar on the sign. Is okay. It historic Don't or get, historical? Don't get started on that. <laughs> Man. Some people just can't get it up. <laughs> I had to bring that up, sorry. Um, I yield. Thank you for your time. If you don't like to sign, you can get another one put in. <laughs> I am not convinced of which is right. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. I appreciate you your efforts um, and everything that you do for the Glen. I mean, this is just... It's just a drop in the bucket. So, so, you know, but, but. How long have you been director of the Glen? Uh, 18 years and change, uh, since June of 2006. So, um, you know, by, by Grinnell Mill timeline, um, I was here when renovations were, were really ramping up a couple of years after the agreement was inked between uh, Antioch University and the township. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. We inked that and started constructing in 2004. And it took about four years, and then yeah. Ben Marcus opened about 08 sometime. And then, of course, the negotiations for the transfer from, the, and from Antioch to, to us took about six years, I think. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry I wasn't here for that chapter. Well, I'm sorry you were too. I think you probably could have helped it along tremendously. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks, Nick. Next on the agenda, we have fire department report. Okay, uh, so since the last meeting that I wasn't at, we had 23 EMS calls, uh, nine fire 
uh, for inspections, mutually requested for three EMS calls, uh, one fire call. We received uh, mutual aid for 10 different EMS calls and that was because of the amount of time we had ambulances that were out of service. Um, so I'm happy to say everything is working. All vehicles are in service, so I don't want to say any more about that. Um, we did bring Casey Flora in. Um, he started his orientation last week, and or, I'm sorry, the week before, and uh, he should be fully up to speed here by the uh, within the next couple of shifts. So that will be a huge help. Um, let's see. We had uh, breathing air compressor uh, was PM'd, and then our the every six month air quality testing that's required to be done. The Life Pack 15, I'm sorry, well, dated myself. The Life Pack 35 arrived the other day and we have set up an implementation for that starting tomorrow. Um, I anticipate it will probably go in service a couple, within a couple weeks after that. Uh, gear lockers were installed. Wait, what's that used for? That's a different vendor for the ambulance. Uh, remind me, what is a defibrillator used for? That's for pacing, cardiac arrest, mm -hmm. um, blood or, uh, vital sign monitors, and tidal CO2. You just purchased it that month ago? Well, I don't remember, but I just $55,000 worth of <clears throat> money. When I watch the videos and I you know, like hear the acronyms and all that, I can see someone doesn't have any context, doesn't know what we're talking about. Yes, it's easy to talk shop. Uh, the gear lockers were installed, yay for that. Um, so that we're on the hook for 50% and the association uh, is paying for half of that. Uh, grant funded uh, turnout gear dryer went in service uh, last week as well. Um, just to update you on some of the dispatch stuff, the virtual private network for our CAD software and that was installed and has been tested. And so that stuff will actually all officially go live in, uh, I think it's the second week of November. What is it? Um, so that is our connection to dispatch electronically. Yep. Um, uh, let me make sure I wanted it. And then uh, Cassidy, I'm going to promote to from acting sergeant to full sergeant um, here actually now. Um, he's been very diligent about um, being a heck of an asset to the department uh, and, and bust his backside. So it's definitely <coughs> early the, the, the full here we go. Um, that. Just double check since I skipped over a couple of yeah, that covers everything I had. So how long were we were borrowing a medic from Spring Valley? Spring Valley, yes. How long did we have it? Uh, we had it two different times, um, which one was three days. Uh, it went back to them and then we had it back within 24 hours because of another break issue with Medic 82. So how long then did we have it? So it was like eight, eight days that it was actually in service for us. That we formally thanked them? Yeah. 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 They've written the, the chief, the chief and I have had a couple of different conversations about it. And then we had a chief's meeting this morning and it was, he, he started to bring it up, and I was like, we don't want to talk about this. <laughs> but yes, no, they're, they know we're very appreciative of that, and they're happy to help. Any questions? Oh, how many hours does Casey plan to work? 32. 32? Mm -hmm. Is that the level, what is the level at which we give health insurance? Is that 32? 36. 36, so. He may be, he may be close to 36, um, and he already has health insurance. So he's not taking it from us? No. Okay, I'm just curious, guys, mm -hmm. to keep track of that. 
And, but we do have a policy of 36 hours. Mm -hmm. and it's a written policy. Yes. Sir. And nobody, <clears throat> nobody ever fall below that, like change kind of like their status in the station because I know. No, the only person that's done that is does is not on our insurance anyway. Right. Well, what do them. Yes, yeah, so sure you guys are too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When does Nate get his um, surgery? He has had his surgery and he's had, um, I think, four days of PT right now. Um, I haven't talked to him today. Last time I had communication with him was on Friday. Um, and, you know, he's, he's doing okay. Yeah. But, you know, fair amount of discomfort. And that was actually, I think, the first day he was able to have a shower. So he was happy about that. Um, and PT, I know, is, you know, it's just going to be miserable. It is what it is. But he's in good spirits. I don't know. Yeah. I know. I give, him, give him a couple more weeks, and he'll, I, I'm, he'll be ready to come back, which, of course, he can. Mm -hmm. And our other knee injury has been doing very well. A return he injured. Well. Yeah, he's um, doing yeah, much better. Getting, getting, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, he, we got any coverage for um, for Nate because he has a long coverage. Yep. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's difficult get, is getting in and out of our apparatus, and so you know that that was definitely putting Justin's knee to to some work, but he's been doing fine with it. So Justin came back just in time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it couldn't have, it couldn't have been time better. That's for sure. Any other? <coughs> I don't have questions. Cemetery report. Yeah, since the last meeting, we've had two burials. We had a full burial in the old part and an ashes in the prairie. That's slow right now. They come in threes. So we we'll probably have another. Um, you got our bases in. Where, uh, our where did you, seriously, where do you hear the, is the three just. It just happens. Everybody knows that. It happens. <laughs> you get one, you. Because I know within the Quaker meeting we say the same it thing. It averages it's like three. three. Yes. Yeah. It's a universal human superstition. Yeah. Yeah. How hard is the ground to dig for? It's ashes? really hard. Oh my Jeez, gosh. it's really hard. It took me an hour to dig that whole spud bar and shell with it took an hour. Wow. It took a long time to dig bases the other day too. Yeah. You know, we had spud bar and a pick and we got them in there. I'll call everybody tomorrow sometime and let them know that their bases are in so they can set their monument. Mm -hmm. We're good there. Um, while I'm gone, I'm going to put my voicemail message to Brandy. I'm going to have him call Brandy. Mm -hmm. All right. Should be fine. Yeah. So remind us how long will you be gone? I'll be gone from the 19th to the 3rd. 19th September to the 3rd October. Only because we don't get back till late on the 2nd. Mm -hmm. Then we fly out early on the 20th, so I'll be ready to go. But I'll be in sometime on the third at the Thursday, I think. Sometime then I'll be in. Yeah. Thanks for letting me go. It makes her happy too. But that's about all I have, I think. How about road report? Okay, I'm gonna finish the ditches up this week. I got four more to do, that's two days worth of moment, so it should be done. And then Brandon will go around with farm mower and pick up what I can't get with the bush home long and long. Then we got a list, he's got a list of things. Just stay pretty active. He usually does. He's taking a couple of days off this week because I'm gonna be going. He'll have to take care of everything. Got a help lined up if he needs help, the usuals are on board to he knows what to do. He's really done. He's had practice at it. He's had practice. <laughs> Uh, you know, things like he'll do is finish clean the guardrails up and that kind of stuff. But, but yeah, he's, we got a list. We got a list. Good to go. All your equipment's happy? All the equipment's happy. That's good. Escavators repaired, adjusted, 
down both tracks, put the track back on, and we just both of them so everything was good. Did you decide what it was that kicked that off? I just, I think it just was sloppy. Yeah. And uh, when I turned in, it just, it just rolled it off, might have been. But it physically, off. it's fine. There's no tears. Yeah. No, it's not the track. And, and yeah. before we messed it up, we done it right. We took the pressure off and put it back on and greased it and adjusted it. And everything's fine. Mm -hmm. We'll do the other one sometime yeah. in the future. Yeah. Is there pricing? Ten thousand bucks for the, the Bobcat. I don't know. The estimator wouldn't be as much, but it's a lot of money. They last for a long time, so. And then other than that, I don't think I have anything else. Questions? Did, uh, does your notebook have any lines? <laughs> None that say rotor center, though. Okay. Let's move on to fiscal officer's report. And we have a resolution uh, amendment of permanent appropriations, which would be resolution 2024-28. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the Miami Township, now therefore the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. General Bond Note Retirement Fund. I had to say that. Uh, I'll just I'll just read uh, within that principal payments increased by three hundred thirteen thousand five hundred dollars, and contingencies increased by two thousand. I would entertain a motion to adopt this. Remind me what the number is, I'm sorry. 2024-28. I move for adoption of the resolution 2024-28. And I second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Nope. Uh, Trustee Mucher? Yes. Trustee Warren? Yes. Hollister? Yes. Passes. Dan, did you say you needed to, to leave early? Or something like well, I do. Huh? I could go do some stuff. Sure. If you don't need me, I'll get out of here. Were you a, did you have a conversation with him today, Dan? About yes. It? Oh, yep. I said that was fine. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going. Thank you. Good night. Uh, Standing committee reports. Can we back up to this officer for just a sec? Sure. Um, there are a few things I just wanted to go over and we don't have a fiscal officer, so that's kind of hard to get much back and forth, but at least for, so you and I, I guess, are on the same page, at least where I am. There are a couple of things I'd like to either confirm or get started or work on as we go along. One is, I would like to have <coughs> all of that star fund interest that's floating around uh, transferred back into the general fund. And we can distribute it in between funds. Margaret was distributing it. I found that all along as revenue into the funds. Gina didn't pick up that practice because she didn't know it had to be done. Um, she was distributing it loosely, like I did some calculations where she was giving it half to the general fund, you know, some to the um, the, the building fund, mm -hmm. and none apparently to the, the um, she was giving none to the fire fund. So it almost seems as if when the, when the count was established, there was these percentages, and as the funds changed size, she didn't adjust the percentages at all, mm -hmm. and just kept giving the same amount. So um, really, these um, this line going down here, right, the percentage of the pooled amount, mm -hmm. should give us, a, should be the breakdown of how, 
which fund gets how much interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's a whole that's a whole ball of wax there. Mm -hmm. But these aren't currently accurate, so True. I was True. going to make a estimation of how they're actually so you want them to go to the general fund. Well, the way I understand the chain of transfer, the the two levy funds have to have the interest posted to them, as correct as oh. we can get. All the other funds, the general fund, it can sit in the general fund, okay. and then we can determine how to divvy that up between all the other funds. It's the two levy funds that have to have. So why would we put it in the general fund and then figure out how to divvy it up? Well, I, I thought it wouldn't be that easy to, to decide, but I guess we probably could decide. By decide, well, you mean decide and assign percentage? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think once about using up, that. Once we're caught up, the, 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 the one question I have, the two levy funds mean the general and the, and the bond fund? The, no, or the fire fund? The, 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 well, the, the general road and bridge, fire, and I guess the building, I forgot to roll that in. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll do it. We could do it any way we want. Yeah, we could. Um, until we, these are numbers are accurate, it'd be a guess anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wonder, well, you oh no, it says we have five hundred sixty-nine thousand dollars, incredibly, in that fund, and I just we just have to find out if that's accurate or not. I, it's just killing me. It, but what I'm saying is that if that number's not correct. It's getting, it will be getting a, a big chunk of the interest mm -hmm. on an incorrect number, but also um, do we do we have to put that interest into the building fund? Couldn't we take it to the general fund? Do, do, no. Does the public get the interest that we... The way I understand it, if it's a, if it's a um, voted on levy, mm -hmm. then that money has to go to that levy's fund. Okay, so we have to get about the business to find out what that number is in that fund. And if that is I, I can't interest from a reserve savings account, in effect, yeah. needs to go to the same purpose as. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there should be a portion going to general roads, fire, and building. Mm -hmm. And I think it was vaguely going, yeah, I'll, I'll look at yeah, I'll look at it again. It's going to four or five places, but not to fire. And yeah. Um, I don't know enough to know where that money could have come from. <laughs> I, I can't imagine I'm simply amassing that much money by having a good interest year. Well, it's not a good interest year. It's, it's I mean, multiple years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we never if we never collect more than three hundred twenty thousand dollars and we quickly pay that off, how do we? I mean, was there there was there a big deposit in the building fund from what I'm just trying to imagine when you built it? Was there no. money to be spent, and so there's money left over? No, there was there was there was virtually no money. There was about fifty thousand dollars left over after we paid everything for the building. And then what we were allowed to do was just designate that money into the general fund or into the fire fund, maybe, I'm not sure which, for future repairs or in improvements, that sort of thing. But it was a minuscule amount of money mm -hmm. compared to what we were, you know, the five million or whatever we had to start with. I mean, we spent it down to pretty much the last penny, which is what, which is what we had to do. The USDA was, you know, was right on top of all this money that was being spent, you know, a, a very short leash with the with the contractor, the general contractor, the architect, our main architect, MSA, and then um, the the project manager, the architect. You know, they all knew that they had to spend this money. They all knew how much money it was going to cost, and you know, it was budgeted down to the last the last day. You know, when it was finished, to the as close to the close to the amount, you know, zero, that we could get. So there was no big 
big chunk sitting around. Now, I would like to know from David, um, you know, that is David Graham. David Graham, his projection at the time that we put the letter together, I believe, was five or five something percent, five and a quarter, if it comes to mind. That's the that was projection of what we'd be paying on bonds. Right. On bond money. When it came down to it, we were paying 3%. So what's the difference that being collected, because we're collecting, we're collecting at that at that millage that would generate the 5%, five and a quarter percent interest rate for 30 years. So what is the difference in that millage over the past over the past cycles that we've been collecting that, that revenue? How much is that difference? I mean, that's we weren't years. collecting at the original so we, yeah, we, yeah, we, cut, we stopped. It's a start, but we quickly he quickly. Well, we didn't quickly do it. It was at least, it doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. But, I mean, it, there was a, there was a, like 300 plus thousand dollars in the account when I tried to get rid of it, when I tried to either get it back or pay it off or something. Okay. And that's when he said, well, he'll start bringing it down. And, and he didn't break down too much. Now, this year, this but cycle for why is it, When you say you don't know where this chunk of money came from, why is it at that money? Because I'm not the county auditor. <laughs> I don't have access to, to those calculations. I mean, I looked in, in, in 2022, she had this fund up to 700000 It said 700000 I just. It's hard for me to believe that we just, I'm getting a good interest rate we collected. I, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you at all. I, yeah. I'm just, I can't, I can't, you know, nail down what, yeah. you know, what the money is, it, 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 how much there was and how much there wasn't. Yeah. Well, yeah. well <coughs> that's what at the moment, partly because of this, uh, what is the rate that's being collected? Like, Point one mil? I don't know why we're bragging about that. <laughs> I really don't when it's an error on our part. So, yeah. 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 It, it, it wasn't an error on our part. I don't think it was. Because money was being collected before the building. Money was being collected as soon as it was authorized. And the building price hadn't been, you know, we hadn't started the bond. We hadn't. And the county auditor had right in front of him every single year, you know, how much was in that fund. You know, and why wouldn't he say there's not supposed to be seven hundred thousand dollars in there? There's not supposed to be a half a million dollars in there, there's not supposed to be three hundred fifty thousand. It should be nothing. It should be, you know, they transfer the money and we pay the electronic fund for six months and then the next six months and then there's zero moving along. Well that's appear that the fund Isn't that his job to I don't know. It, I think we, we report, and we're about to report again. We re, I don't we report our estimated resources in mm -hmm. any fund? Yeah. So when we reported so our estimated our, resources. On our reports annual. And at some, at some point we reported a very large number then. And um, maybe it's a good number. Well, and that's why it's cut it. Yes. The current collection down, and we'll go back up. Yeah, so we could just let it go and think, okay, the number's correct, or we could... No, I, I, I'm sure, I, I, I agree we should be. But I don't be, really know how to do it, but I'll get back with them and we should be put our heads together. Precise. It's, what's the weird thing when Jane, Jane just ran the revenue reports, the fund wasn't established until 2020. 2020? Yeah. Um, uh, that doesn't seem she said it only that would be reports. That'd be two years for construction. I, I yeah, I don't have a good timeline. That's happening. I don't I have a good timeline because I wasn't here. I know it was during COVID. <laughs> that doesn't well, help. Each, okay. Each of our votes to so authorize maybe, expenditure would have a fund number. So the building fund money that was being spent would have come out of. Maybe, that, maybe that's when we started making payments in two twenty. No? Things to the USDA? Mm -hmm. Possibly. Okay. Okay, well, it's probably a combination of 
something and I don't know enough. That's probably the problem. Uh, more than likely, we did not pay USDA anything until we spend the money. I, I don't believe we're ever going to pay them ahead and put let them put so that money in their kitty. So it's possible we just collected money for since two, from 2079 and, and then we had a lot of money, cash on hand, much more than we expected. Maybe, but we spent it. I, I know that at the end of the project, we spent everything but a couple of, couple of bucks. There was no half a million lying around. Well, when the Bryan Center was built, you know, taxes authorized in 1918, and the building wasn't finished until 34, so 28 or something. There was a there was a period when taxes were being collected. Now, Meryl, I'm going to say one caveat to that. It was our financial arm that was determining how much money was we had and where it was and what it was for. And we sent those numbers to the auditor and then certified that. That's what we're looking at. So you're saying we told the numbers and he believed us? Yeah. What did he say to you on the phone? He told me. Yeah, he said, I'm using your numbers. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what Becca keeps telling me when I, when I call and say, what the heck is this number? He says, yeah, that's the one you gave us. <laughs> I said, thanks, Becca. That's pretty helpful. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway. I don't, it did took one to untangle, but we should do it. Because they're going to be sending out that, we have to re put in our estimated resources soon. Mm -hmm. And we may report, well, see, none of these are, we don't really know the status of our country council. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we need to get that so that we can <laughs> report accurate numbers. Uh, well, yeah. by October 3rd, we'll have this all figured out, right? When's October 3rd? Oh, the next meeting. Oh, okay. okay, well, that was, that was my first line of okay. my, Please, my lines on my. Okay. So is it October 7th, next meeting? No. I stand corrected. Thanks, Fred. Um, I want to make sure that, uh, that our. Uh, like everything else, that our electronic fund transfers that we've been doing to pay our medical bills, how much are they? And they need to go into all the different funds. I mean, they need to be appropriated in the right accounts. You mean no anthem premiums and things like mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Right. That and all the others as well. Well, yeah, but that one seems to be, I mean, it's, it's like we've spent $8,000 in a year and we yeah. appropriated $130,000 right. for it. I checked with Gina and she said the anthem has been withdrawn from our um, U.S. bank account and um, has not been um, put into the land. So. Okay, well. Yeah, and that's. Well, well we're. <coughs> I just. Uh, we're making. Yeah, I, we're, tr tr we're transferring from doing everything on paper to trying to do more not auto pay, but electronic transfer. And our, uh, we are required to sign paperwork for each expenditure, like it was a check. Two of the three trustees have to sign every check. Well now, we're, as we do more and more electronic transfer, we're gonna to have to have a paper system where we're doing the same thing. This is, we, and it exists. We, voted, we vote to approve payment of bills. Uh, the reason it's uh, broken down each, well, voted on, and then we, we wouldn't have to list all the subcategories, but we have to <clears throat> make a vote and then it manually sign for any expenditure. And we are legally required by, by administrative law of the state to have those expenditures in front of us for review prior to our approving them. And they should say what they're for. And we're not getting that. Well, well but we are legally so obligated to do that. We're signing away our responsibility. So we, we, the, the pattern has been, we look at checks, we come in here and vote on them, and then we go sign. 
uh, it's going to become and he's trying to modernize this. No, it's not about modernization. No, it's about accountability. It's about accountability. Well, it's also. I don't care how we pay for it. It's, just as it's long a as pattern that was started on in 1803. <laughs> I want to know what we're paying for. I want to know if there's sales tax being collected. I want to know if it's, you know, for the for the right account. I, I can look at these bills and I can see that, you know, if somebody's signing off and saying it's, this is a fire but it, and it's not, you know, I can pick that stuff up. If I'm not seeing any of those things, I can't do that. And that that I feel is, you know, what I'm being paid to do. Yep. Well, what, what I'm obligated to do. Okay, well anyway, yeah. we're making progress. Quickly moving on. Um, Mira, did we pay YSDC the 10 grand? No, and that's something I need to talk to you guys about, and that's about, um, and I talked, actually I finally called Julie because they are asking to be paid, and I, I talked to them, and it's, it's about the ARPA, it's about, um, Perhaps we can talk about it sometime. Um, it's about whether we're in the what's that category they call the standard allowance category or not. Mm -hmm. And I think we want to stay in the standard allowance category. Therefore, we need to first amend what we said we were going to spend. Mm -hmm. Then we need to transfer those funds. Mm -hmm. Then we can pay them. Yeah. Okay, that's what. I, so that's we, need what I to, we need to transfer it out of our fund. Yeah. So I, Julie suggested we do that. Um, you know, as soon as possible, don't wait to the 31st of December. Just pick the places where you're going to transfer them into, I figured, the general fund. Mm -hmm. You know, claim the standard of allowance, and then that's all you're going to have to report is what the funds are going to transfer. Mm -hmm. so, that should, so until we do that, um, we can't pay them. So. I didn't think we had time to have a conversation of which line items we want to put it in. Okay, let's have that another time. We put that on our October 7th. Yeah, as long as we're not getting late payment uh, for, bills for from YSTC. YSTC. No. Um, but I, I don't think it needs to be... Well, yeah, we put on the agenda tra to transfer the other funds to the gen general fund. But perhaps we could talk about where we'd like to put this. Mm -hmm. And then they can sit there for. Yeah, we could report that well, we that we use it as a standard allowance to. Um, we don't have to appropriate that money. Well, I mean, we do because we said we have to designate where we can put it. No, we just have to put the. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll show you my notes of what. Yeah, you know, let's talk the details um, on that meeting. October seventh. Okay, here's a detail that I always forget to ask anybody about. Fund number two nine zero one. Miscellaneous special revenue. Fifty thousand. It has nine thousand eighty-five dollars and forty-one cents in it. And for the life of me, I have no idea what that's for. Which one? There's nothing in appropriations. I mean, there's nothing appropriated in the fund. Uh, where it's getting the revenues from, I have, I have no idea. And what about 4902, likewise? 4902 is the Grinnell Mill maintenance fund. Okay. Yeah. So, so okay. you don't know, I mean, I was just hoping somebody would say, oh, yeah, that's the... So we, can, we can look at a hist the history of it. That's the Don Hollister Slush Fund. No. Um, Okay. Do, do we? And you, you said that uh, the transfer out of the general fund, the sixty-six. Okay, I think I figured it out. What the fund you said we transferred it into doesn't show it a transfer, and it just shows a transfer of the big chunks, thirty-three and thirty-six thousand. Yeah. We had some. We had two sixty-nine or something. Mm -hmm. and then we put sixty-seven. Mm -hmm. She just put all one big chunk. So mm -hmm. that's that's good. The only other things I just, you know, that I stay up late at night worrying about is, are we sure, I mean, are we c current on paying our OPERS and, and, and OPF fund, the fire fund? 
The retirement fund, are we current? Do we have any idea? Are we current on paying our Social Security payments, our Medicare payments, our claim links, monthly, our monthly payments to them, uh, our, our dental, you know, our half of the dental, are we paying that? Uh, uh, our RETA money that we cut from employees, I don't see anything about that ever. I don't see any checks for RETA. I, we used to pay checks to all of If they become electronic transfer, we would have forms to sign for that, right? Yeah, workman's comp, I'm paying that. I'm just throwing these out, things that I worry about. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I had for Chris Bosser. To be continued next time. Standing committee reports. Wait a minute. Did we skip, that? Did we skip zoning? Yes, we did skip zoning. Please don't skip zoning. It's the second meeting. Do we have, even though normally we would uh, put that on the the first meeting of the month is there are there zoning items well chris has been sit, sitting in a zoning inspector and i see you handle like three things this week it's only taken me two hours per question to, to refresh my memory yeah. and um i thought your answer sounded good to me but um, <laughs> and i was happy that you, you took that on and um or any of them to hang That's what you get when you sit home with COVID. You got nothing else to do. You look at the email. I can do that. Well, I think I put out a cry for help, and you, you said, I'll take that. Okay. And I was very grateful. Right. And um, are any of them causing you trouble, or people, they were pretty straightforward? I don't know. Everybody seemed to respond and say thank you. Okay. That, was, that, was, that was good. I haven't had a bad one yet. Hopefully, we'll find out from Brian here soon. That was, um, that was my only question. Speaking of which, <clears throat> you brought up something last last week about how to communicate with the zoning commission i asked for guidance yes. and I, I thought that it might be a good idea to give brian corey his own email address i no longer think that's a, a good idea i think but we don't have a zoning administrator right now we hope to very soon so like our website says until further notice they can be sent to the miami township trustees care of the township trustees for the zoning commission is that the way to phrase it that sounds great it, likewise in an email you can do the same okay. and then i'll distribute it to them um i do and then you and say with um snail mail you can do the same okay yeah that's where i started oh, oh an email you, you do the same you asked i'm going to ask them at the, the next meeting or i probably should call and phone you ask do they do they keep all the correspondence and yet that's a very good question and we're i don't know what the rules are i suppose the um freedom of information act applies to them as well yeah so I, I think we've been a sleepy little township for a long time and i don't know that the um zoning commission has kept their i, I don't we don't even have a system for that so yeah, we kind of did and do, I don't know if we did now, but back in the olden days, we had folders that were zone commission minutes were put in, in the folder. Then there was a long period of time where we didn't have a, a, a recorder for the zone commission, and people put out a said, well, there were no minutes to be had. Mm -hmm. When we did have a recorder, then we had minutes, and we asked that the, uh, in order for the recorder to be paid, uh, that he get his minutes approved by the chair of the zoning commission, and the chair would then forward it to us to to, uh, to pay the, the recorder. And that seemed to work for, a, for quite a while, and also kept a copy of the zoning commission minutes here, and we, we which post on the website too, which were given to our past zoning inspector. Mm -hmm. That, that final zoning commission minutes mm -hmm. were given to him for his filing. Now, whether there's a file with all of those in there, I couldn't tell. Margaret had one, and they're on the website. Mm -hmm. And there are other things too, like people have been sending correspondence about, you know, Fish. does that have to be kept public? Um, like when somebody sends them information about solar or against solar or 
about a Wojciech correspondence from somebody about the temporary use. It's public to their body, yeah, not necessarily for ours. Yeah. Because so they're different. They should have, I, I, I can't imagine people requesting, you know, somebody else's, or show me all the correspondence we've gotten, I don't know, but. Yeah. I don't know how that usually done huh, for commissions. Does the zoning commission have a space in their budget for a administrator? You talked about a zoning administrator. Is there such a thing? There certainly is such a thing. Uh, ours was all encompassing. Our zoning inspector was the zoning administrator. Was the was the uh, BZA liaison? Was the zoning commission liaison? And the secretary for minutes. Was that person also doing that work? It was the responsibility, but not the actual end yeah. result. If I may be, um, be receive more information, does the Zoning Commission have the opportunity then to pay for the services of a recorder? Yes. So that leads me to a different question related to that. Does the zoning commission assignment come with a salary or payment? Do the commissioners who serve on the zoning commission have some kind of reimbursement for their time and effort? Uh, no, other than they receive a, uh, a yearly gratuity from the board of trustees. And that's not statutory, that's just a it's like a holiday card gift. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just seems like they do a lot of work, so I just was surprised to come to this understanding that that's all done voluntarily. Well, uh, I mean, it's within the village, for instance, zoning commission is all volunteer. Um, all the commissions are volunteer? Yeah. yeah. Environmental Commission, etc. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. BZA, they don't get paid, but they get a holiday gratuity. Honorary. Honorary. And how long is that? Do you remember starting that, or was it always no, I, I did start it. Mm -hmm. It was after Dick Eastman. Uh, anything else on zoning? I have nothing else. I have nothing else. I, mean, I know there are always is, but... Did you see just right down the street? Standing committee reports? I wasn't going to run out there, though. <laughs> I did not go to the MVRPC meeting this month. So, I don't have any report for them. Green County Regional Planning. I went to both the executive committee and the full commission meeting. Uh, both were very short. There was mostly administrative work. There was moving money around in the budget, pay for new employees, and et cetera, et cetera, and some equipment that was needed. Um, uh, regional planning is doing an excellent job of uh, maintaining their uh, their funds adequately for for what they need and what they want. Um, they're running generally at least 15% more in revenue than they're expending, uh, which is really good. And they have quite a little cash carryover, which I know the county commission is going to get their reading hands on at some point because about 10 years ago, they said, oh, you've got a little too much money in your accounts. We'll take 75% of it. What? Well, you've not used to be accounts by the end. Okay. Um, it was a fine meeting. Uh, Clifton Union Cemetery has not met. Um, why is Development Corporation um, hired? Amy Lowe to um, be their director this year. And um, last I heard, the executive commission was meeting with her to set out priorities of what she should do. Um, I also, 
toured the, um, I didn't tour the Honda plant today. I went to a, one of those elected officials. We got an invitation, do you remember them now? Mm -hmm. uh, didn't have much of a tour because all there is big machineries carrying big things around it, making big holes. And, um, but I, we got a nice um, presentation, it's very fascinating, about what they're going to produce there and their history in Ohio is really good. Carolyn and Stephanie was really impressed that, that tour. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to be available. Yeah. And they, they put her off like three times. Well, one, one thing that I realized was, first of all, all this hubbub about Honda LG is here, and it's great. Their product is going to be extremely specific. They're, they're creating these cells, mm -hmm. some anode and some cathode, which they're going to ship to another place in Ohio, and they're going to pack them together and make a battery, and that's it. That's what they produce. These, they have an anode side and a cathode side, they produce them, and that's it. And I was also really amazed at the history of Honda in Ohio. And um, this whole, I mean, I knew that electric cars didn't have engines, but it didn't quite hit me that, that they're, they are internal combustion engine experts and they're doing this big, they're, they're looking at it like a new chapter of their lives, you know. Yeah, really. And, Reinventing oh, and looking at Ohio, Ohio has a lot of pieces of it. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of the pieces of this new um, phenomenon of the electric car. Yeah. I, I, it kind of all hit me today during that presentation. It is rather than hybrid, all electric. All electric. That's, that's, that's what they're building. They're, yeah, the batteries are for the all electric cars, not for the hybrid cars. Mm -hmm. They're quite different batteries. Yeah. Honda has umpteen facilities in the state of Ohio, maybe two times umpteen. I mean, Governor Rhodes is, you go through some little smiley, you know, Podunk, Ohio, home of the Honda interior weather stripping plant, you know, and there's 300 people in this plant. And it's the whole town, and it's just one of them, a bunch of them. Yeah, but the CEO is very ambitious to make like this one of the best battery plants in the, the nation. So, this, the landscape looks weird out there because there's so much going on, so much <laughs> road traffic, but also. Um, so this is just over the county line in Madison County. I guess that's where I was. <laughs> just that is just past Green County. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Green County Township Association, well, it wasn't a whole lot of business, uh, but we heard a report on uh, one of the county water, drinking water services. Uh, I was startled as I serviced one of them one of the regions that they serve uh, is going all, uh, what's that membrane, reverse osmosis. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's uh, extremely purifying. Uh, that's very expensive. Yeah. Do you know the village, now we have softened water, did they, did they do uh, reverse osmosis or did they do some other filtration? I it must be another one because I don't. You were calling work here. They did by reverse osmosis for the village. Not their new water treatment plant. Uh, I think they said they're that would be serving fourteen thousand households. Eighty-one thousand, I think it was. Eighty-one thousand. Eighty-one thousand households. I mean, that's not very many for. Well, it's only. Oh, is it even? No, it's not. Oh, maybe it's eighteen thousand. Maybe it's eighteen thousand. Anyway. It was 18,000. Uh, it's a fraction of the county, but uh, wow. High tech future, electric cars and reverse osmosis. Uh, no report from the. And all the electric car manufacturers are shutting down production or cutting it way back because the sales are mm -hmm. down, down, down. Well, we have the 
you started to say no report from, from the GFNB. Right. From the, let's, let's spell that out. Glen Forest Natural Burial. Uh, I'll try to get Gina to change that. How does your maintenance slash whatever <coughs> title he has, person doing that? Thing? He does. He's fi fine. He's still going in and um, looking for bad guys, yeah. meaning in bases and taking them out here and they're touring through and and it is continuing with the solarization of that one part and seeing how that's going to work out. So I got a, a call from somebody. Didn't, basically, it was a complaint, but he was wondering what's this strip of plastic in front of his parents' grave. And you explained that it was temporary for killing off the non- The turf grass, basically. The turf grass. So, and then it'll be seeded yeah. with the uh, prairie plants. But he wants it mowed to his parents' gravestone. He wants to be able to see his parents' gravestone. Move he said it's a move, yard. Move the stone closer to the path. Oh, it's tell them that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably move all of them. Yeah. Which is why they just have small, humble stones. Mm -hmm. uh, but we still have a significant item under new business. Uh, Which day it stayed. It is a real important to put to this. Well, we don't have to, to uh, go very deep today, but we, we have uh, a proposal from Frederick Kauser, who has finished his consulting work with us, uh, or finished two phases, and he has proposed that we retain him for some implementation. He's done you know, reviews of our operations. Um, and this, this covers the whole map. And I'm, I'm not sure we really expected to. <laughs> well, this were the recommendations from the work he's done so far. So yeah. These are the recommendations of what we should do there at 19. And so how he could help acting on those recommendations, but we may, uh, you know, one of us could go through uh, the manual and evaluate it instead of paying him, for instance. Yeah, generally, uh, that's a, a legal service that does that because, you know, it, the longer, the older your manual is, the more it gets in conflict with the current you know, requirements. Although, the legal service would charge a much higher hourly rate. Uh, perhaps. <coughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying, I couldn't do that. You mm -hmm. know, I, I don't. Sorry, advice on him. Um, well, if I was trying to do it, I wouldn't be going and looking at the law. I'd be looking at what other townships have. <laughs> okay. What did their lawyers tell them? What if they didn't use lawyers? Well, I think that we have, he, he made it abundantly clear that we are, our history is a volunteer organization and we haven't made the le leap quite in our processes of being a professional organization. Um, now that's and talking specifically about the fire department. He makes other recommendations. Yeah, I, yeah, so you were talking about the, the manual, so I, we got to start somewhere. Um, I think there's a certain amount of discomfort in the station right now because of things that haven't been, that haven't evolved and um, I mean, such things as, um, let's see, uh, 
established department level performance metrics for the fire and rescue department and required monthly and annual reporting. Requ establishing um, expectations for the, for, the for the fire chief, for the chief administrator, um, holding them to those expectations, even knowing what, I mean, I don't have the qualifications to set expectations for the, for the staff over there. Mm -hmm. um, I would think for that purpose, we need somebody in the business who's had a maybe a 20, 30 year career doing it, which is what he is. So I guess we should go through these and think either we're going to ignore the recommendations or there's some we're going to attempt to do ourselves with other outside work, either ourselves or hiring other people or contract with him to do them. Um, I'm, I'm looking as far as um, the, the near future, like we, we, he has made it clear that <coughs> then he hasn't received the, ter the training he deserves to do this type of operation. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we don't set those things in place, how do we, um, and then five, six years from now, Danny retires, is, I think his intention, we haven't developed anybody else behind him. Mm -hmm. Part of his recommendation here is develop the, office, develop the officers. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned that, um, our consultant felt like this opportunity, this tragedy that's happened to his knee and the long recovery time, be taken as an opportunity to really um, develop a um, mate, okay. second in command, mm -hmm. who might be the likely successor. Right now we don't even have our eye on the successor. You retire, then he retires, and whoever is left or whoever comes after us is left with an undeveloped right at the same place we are right now. And it seems like this is a time to, in, to invest in our evolution. And a, another um, recommendation, or not another service he's gonna offer is um, help with the, the budgeting, How is it, you know, the budget for this fire station, train the chief in, in, in creating and managing the budget, but also look ahead give us hard evidence for levy cycles that if we don't have, that we have to do ourselves. It's rather than just, that we have to do ourselves. So I, I just feel like, I don't know if this proposal is the answer, but I think that if we just say, well, you know, we'll think about it, then we're, we're letting things devolve. Oh, I agree. <coughs> where he uh, starts sort of the preface to his list of uh, recommendations in the consultant agreement, and I haven't checked to see if they're exactly the same wording as the recommendations on his report. It's, he has the heading project kickoff, meet with five stakeholders, which was the three trustees, the fiscal officer, and the uh, fire chief. Meet with five stakeholders to prioritize each recommendation, identify dependents, and establish a timeline for each. I suggest we pay him to have that meeting. Uh, and it, it might indeed not you know, be a half day or uh, and see how far we go, how far we get with a half day. Uh, and then from that conversation, review a consultant agreement. And it might be that we would do it half of these or or that he would be the, the leader in half of these items. Or, I, 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 I'm saying that arbitrarily, the half. Mm -hmm. uh, Question? Yes. Um, I'm, of course, not knowledgeable about any of that, but the first thing that comes to my mind is 
he's this person whom I don't know is making recommendations and then wants to be the person to help you implement them. But you talked about things that make me think, for instance, um, the fire department and its need for specific uh, goals and objectives for each individual there and how do you measure that and so forth. Is your consultant good at fire departments? Is that his, her, its expertise? Yeah. And then you go to accounting and then you go to some other section. If those five stakeholders do not include a person who is good at fire, how do they propose something? I, I'm just ignorant, and you don't have to answer me on it. I'm just... Well, he was a fire chief for 25 years in Columbus. And not only that, it was, a, it, was a, it was an odd situation where it was a very large fire department, but it was still a township because the township mm -hmm. had engulfed the city that was provided. So he's extremely, extremely qualified for not, not only how fire stations work, and how, how to develop personnel, but how the intricacies of township accounting and... and um, didn't he also, didn't the fire station also grow from a volunteer to a professional? Yeah, yes, he so also went through the same process he, we did. Yeah, he was a volunteer in it. Uh, okay, so this yeah, so is a person you've consulted that's got recommendations for you and also has the credentials to know what that's about. That's what I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. But I got swayed by the accounting, and you had different issues about accounting that you were talking about tonight. And I was imagining, not that it was accounting for the fire department, but accounting for the township. And then I was thinking, well, is this consultant good at all these things? Well, that, that's a legitimate question. And, and, and in, in part, are there other, well, one suggestion is that we have that we switch to having an outside payroll system. We have we have a third party payroll. We contract that out. Well, we have a fiscal officer who's worked in on in organizations where she did everything, or there was some of it was contracted out, or all of it was contracted out. So, um, but they weren't in the context of township laws and rules. And, um, yeah. So it, it may well be that uh, I was she would recommend we not go that direction. I, I was just curious to understand a little more about the conversation and to see, be sure that this idea is the person helping you qualified was evident. Now you know it was evident. Mm -hmm. I didn't know and maybe the camera doesn't know. Oh, I, I think you, you had a very good question. And well, I'm not as, as much concerned about him being overqualified. You know, trying to make the, the big square peg of a huge department fit down in this Trying to make hole. Chicago fit into Yellow Spring. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But that's well, one of the things he says is uh, not that all this will take 10 years, but that uh, you can't click your finger. Yes, you're, you're, you're shifting into being a professional uh, fire department, uh, and that impacts trustee dynamics and uh, other, other stuff. Um, but it's going to take 10 years. Well, can, but, can we get back to the trustees discussing what we need to do? Well, I feel like that's yeah. part of what we're doing. Right? Yeah, except for... Okay. I made, I made a specific, specific suggestion. How about that? I made a specific suggestion that we <clears throat> ask him to meet with and do this project kickoff as a... It is, he meet with us, the uh, fiscal officer and the chief, to review this and, and go into the, the details of what would this involve, how much time, what, what calendar time, uh, 
and break it into smaller chunks. Fine with me. Not make it 16 month or whatever it is contract. Yes. I just wanted to know if we're in agreement that there are some important things we need to take care of. Oh, 100%. You're, you're in agreement. I mean, that's, that's good. Like things like I can't do, and if we don't get him, we need to get somebody else. To right. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Well, he's definitely an all one package. The question is, is it a package that we can handle? But can we have, mm -hmm. number one, and handle? The, the monetary part of it, and then two, the responsibility of doing all these things that he recommended, you know, getting the HR consultant, getting the financial, getting the accounting, getting the... Well, if we were going to do that, he's saying he, he would do that. He, he would do that work. Well, not necessarily. He said he could. No, he could. I mean, if, if but, I, if, I mean one thing he specifically, you know, he says that the, the chief should have... Uh, so to speak, a mentor, you know, another chief, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, others who may have had a similar conversation with Danny. I asked him about that, and he said he's very enthusiastic, and, um, and he's not sure that uh, that that would be something we'd pay for. It may, may be something that exists. If, if there's a, a partnership relationship in some. The professional friendship, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, Frederick was assuming it would be something we'd pay something to do. Details. Yes. Well, we don't have to answer him in, in, at any level at all, but um. I suggest that we do ask him to. Uh, outline a half day and it would be would this be in public or would it be yeah it would be in public yeah. um, I'm sure that's that, that fine lunch you know in an attempt to not get too far behind in you know the calendar you know, we'd wait until the next meeting to decide whether to do this and then and then on and on and on I mean I, I'm in favor of you contacting him and seeing if, if that's something that he's amenable to. Um, uh, uh, one of the very immediate things that Denny actually sent an email to me was the getting the, getting our schedule, what do they call it, schedule payment, um, you know, salary schedule, schedule, salary schedule mailed down. After you guys left, he, he worked one out, he said there's an example, and he, had, he couldn't stop himself until he had the thing done. Mm -hmm. It's done. I took a picture of it. I don't want to steal his intellectual property. Um, Denny says there's some real discrepancies in what people are making as far as... Well, remember, Fred said that was the number two catastrophic problem that we had, and we needed to address it, like, yesterday. There were three things. Remember when, when he presented yeah. his final thing? And that was, that was number two. So that... He said, we are so open for... <laughs> yeah. So that, that's something, if I could steal his intellectual property, we could pass it tonight. But I don't want to. <laughs> but maybe at that meeting, we could... Um, maybe he would agree to it. Maybe he would agree to it as part of this... Um, he, <clears throat> he would like to work with us, and he loves Yellow Springs. And he wants $2,400 in housing. Oh, you mean estimating two visits a month for 12 months or 16 months? Or well, mentoring, took this whole mentoring is a um, hands-on thing. You know? Sure. That was for the year, right? <coughs> More than a year. Yeah. 2400 for the whole thing. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. 16 months, and that would work out to be something like that. Well, uh, do we need to have a vote on? I mean, I don't think so. Okay. I think I we think just so. need to call a public meeting and ASAP, probably. Well, then I'll try to get schedule the five of us plus Frederick 
for a half day. And by including Gina, yes, whose participation would be her choice, right? Oh, sure. Everybody's a participant. <laughs> well, not really. Well, we vote, we're all in, and no, it, we I vote for sure, but, sure. but as far as we're taking um, accepting, well, assist we're not, accepting assistance from It's them. not a specific amount of money. Um, what is it? We don't know what he would charge for half oh, day. Oh, for this. Okay, I see. So I think I can go ahead and do that without having a vote. Okay. Any other items? For tonight? No, I. Not besides adjournment, which I move to do so. Sounds like that's official. <laughs> I'll declare this meeting adjourned. There we go.